So my collection as it stands would not be complete without these fragrances right here. Each of these to me play a huge role in my collection. I really like all of them a lot. They all kind of provide something specific for certain types of situations that I might be wanting a scent for. All of these kind of hit on different little corners of, you know, the fragrance community as well. Maybe not the community is the right word, but the, the different genres or styles or types of scents, right? There's a little bit of just about everything in here, or at least for me, um, a little bit of everything that I look for in a scent, right? Each one of these kind of uh, has a certain portion of that covered. And, you know, I've kind of done videos similar to what I'm about to say before, but if my whole collection were to burn down and I was starting over, these are the types of things that I would be making sure to add back into my collection as quickly as possible, just to kind of put it that way. And as we go through this, I think you'll see what I mean uh, in terms of all of these kind of covering all of the bases that are important to me. And so if you wanna check some of these out for yourself, I'll drop some links down below to discounters for you. I always shop through discounters, save a lot of money that way. Uh, we'll start this off with an incredibly obvious one. And so we'll just get it out of the way right now. And we're really kind of working into prime time to wear this scent. It's Dior Ohm Intense. You guys know it, iris, lavender, ambrette, all of that good stuff. Beautiful scent, dusty, powdery, chocolatey, uh, with a, a little bit of a lavender aromatic freshness. It's a little bit peppery as well, has a little tiny bit of a spicy kick too. Smells fantastic. I love the scent, I love the parfum as well. In fact, the whole Dior Ohm line is amazing, but you know, only choosing one for the video instead of putting a bunch of them in here. I just kind of went for this one, which to me kind of falls right in the middle. It's not the most extreme, but it's definitely not the freshest and lightest one either. It's kind of where this one sits. I think when it comes down to it, uh, it's a great kind of stepping point or entry point into some iris scents. You could start off easier as well, for sure. Gentleman EDP and things like that. But I still think DHI is relatively safe given a lot of the circumstances, as long as you know what you're looking for and you know what you're getting yourself into. That being said, it's also not something that maybe you should go out and blind buy if you're just starting out. So, you know, use some discretion there. But ultimately for me, it's one that I have to have in my collection. And for a lot of you guys, it might kind of be the similar thing. And yeah, that one's a little bit more expensive. You know, it's $95, $100 on discounters. This next one is about $35, so a lot more affordable. It's John Varvatos Vintage. I love the John Varvatos brand, at least talking about their fragrances here. I have no experience with any of their clothing items or anything. But in terms of their scents, you can generally get these for around $35 to maybe sometimes pushing $50 range, depending on what it is. This one's got tobacco, suede, and balsam fir. It's woody, it's a tiny bit smoky, it's very aromatic, very masculine, it smells amazing. There's also, to me, a little bit of a soapy, clean freshness too, which I think it kind of adds a lot of uh, value to the scent overall, and definitely helps with the versatility. Uh, this is the type of thing that could easily be a signature scent. If you're someone who wants to play it safe and play it simple, and you only want to have a handful of scents in your collection and you want to be able to use them and enjoy them a lot, you could go for something like this. Wear it pretty much any time of the year whenever you feel like it, uh, both casual and formal situations. I think it provides a lot of value for a low competitive cost. And also talking about that cost, the quality to price ratio is off the charts. This smells a lot more expensive and premium than what it actually goes for, assuming you're shopping at discounters. So I don't really have anything bad to say about John Vervado's Vintage. I guess the one issue that is most common is people wish it would perform a bit better. For me, uh, the pros far outweigh that con, and so I'm fine with it. I love having this stuff around. Mercedes-Benz Club Black is kind of my go-to straight up vanilla bomb. You know, when I'm wanting something that is, you know, wearable in the sense of it's not gonna smell like I spilled, you know, uh, vanilla extract all over myself like I was just trying to bake or something in the kitchen. That being said, it does have kind of a syrupy sweet kind of vanilla extract style, but there's a lot more going on with it. The benzoin one giving it a dusty powderiness, a bit of a bright ambroxan. So there's more to it than that, but it still is vanilla heavy. But uh, 
There are definitely some scents out there, especially niche, that might go a little bit more heavy handed and be harder to pull off and smell less like a cologne or a fragrance and more like you're trying to bake something in the kitchen and spilled all over yourself. Uh, regardless of that, I think if you're looking for a vanilla forward scent that's about $50, that has great quality and even respectable performance, you should check out Club Black. I've talked about this one a lot on the channel. It's for great reason. I think this one, for the price point, is hard to beat. But you have to be sure that you are into vanilla forward scents. It's the main focus here. If you're not, then you're going to want to pass on this. So I had to throw in another iris scent, you know, when it comes to me and my collection. These are the ones that I really gravitate towards a lot in the fall and winter time. You know, that kind of makes up the bulk of what I like to wear. You know, generally it is the iris forward scents, the tobacco scents, and the boozy scents. And a lot of them are a mixture of, of both of those or all three in some instances. When I break it down, that's kind of really what I enjoy to wear the most in the cold weather. This one's Gentleman Eau de Parfum Reserve Privé. So this one has chestnut, iris, and whiskey. So a little bit of a booziness, a little bit of an iris mixed into one. And some gourmand aspects as well from the chestnut, giving it a little bit of a kind of a uh, by the fireplace slash stronger with you feel. Although it doesn't smell like those, but that chestnut note is very distinct. You pick up on it easily. So in one way, it just gives it a little bit of a... a Kind of a, a woody, smoky nuance, which I really like, and it works well in this. The whiskey ultimately gives it a splash of a boozy kick that makes it feel a little bit more grown up. Gentleman EDP is a lot more mainstream and, and base level. This one, Reserve Privé, takes it up a notch. It's going to be, at least right now at the time of me shooting this, the most intense or extreme within the line, and I love everything about it. This is a phenomenal release. Loam Ideal Extreme by Guerlain is up next. You know, technically coming in as a niche brand, it's designer priced. I mean, this is going to actually be more affordable than a lot of your Dior's, Armani's, Chanel's, and YSL's, and Gucci's, you know? So really, the pricing here is, is on point. It's $100 or so on discounters. I think I've seen it into the 90s before. Uh, very reasonable given what you get in return, which is a plum, almond, and tobacco-based scent. It's very unique, and it's the most developed of the line, in my opinion. You know, the Eau de Parfum is at a close second for me. I love that one as well. This one, it branches furthest away, but still really maintains kind of a close grip on that low midi all DNA with the heavy focus on the almond here. But the plum tobacco mixture is unique. You don't see it often, and it really sets this one off. I've talked about this one a lot on the channel. It's one that oftentimes is hard to get sold out, you know, on discounters and even retailers. Uh, it's back now and it has been pretty consistently for a while. So, you know, I'll throw it into videos when I can now that I don't feel like I have to hold off because it was impossible to get. So you can pick this one up. I think pretty much on your favorite discounter right now, for the most part, they have them in stock for about that price point that I mentioned there. Worth picking up, and I'll throw this out there right now. If you're on the fence and you've been wanting it and you've been waiting, pick it up right now while it's in stock. As soon as we probably start getting into November, December, when it really starts getting cold, I have a feeling, I don't know for sure, of course, but it, more likely that's going to start selling quicker. I mean, you don't want to miss out all winter not being able to get it easily. So pick it up now while you can. Prada Lunarosa Black is up next. I love this stuff. It's not for everybody. You know, a lot of you guys aren't going to like it. Maybe you found that out yet already, or maybe you haven't. Uh, it's all about basically the, the tonka bean and the amber, but mostly the tonka bean. Powdery to the extreme. So because of that, it's not inherently masculine. You know, it's not maybe what you would expect from a men's scent, even though this is marketed for men. It's within the Luna Rosa line here. So it pushes the boundaries for sure, you know, kind of similar to Midnight in Paris, Bulgari Black, both of those been discontinued. And when you smell this, it probably makes sense to you. Again, I love this fragrance a ton, but I can understand why it's not for everybody and why it might not sell all that well. It's looking like it's still in production. I don't know for sure. You never get any straight answers from Prada when I've tried to reach out before been times where they say it's been discontinued. There's times where they say it's not. So you don't know. I think it's in stock on retailers for 130 
discounters will sometimes pick this one up for below that. Sometimes you'll save 15, 20, 25 bucks off of retail. So definitely the way to go if you can. Uh, one I do recommend if you're into powdery scents. Next up, Brioni Eau de Parfum Intense. Impressive line, this whole line is really. Everything from the original up to their summer version, the Eclat, and then all the way to the new Essentiel. This is kind of somewhere there in the middle. Well, it's the first flanker, um, I believe. I think it is. Yeah, first flanker, I think. Uh, this one's got apple, oud, and patchouli. It, really nice. You know, it's uh, still carrying over some of that ozonic fresh kind of freshness from the original it doesn't really have the violet leaf type of smell but it does have some of that freshness some of that, that cooling nose tingling tendencies that the regular edp version has but they are focusing in on the patchouli and a little bit of oud to give it some more sweetness to me it's a true representation of a intense flanker uh, it's an EDP intense, but also remember that the original Brioni for men, you know, the first of this line is an EDP as well. So they're just taking that and they're working it, making it a little bit heavier, a little bit stronger. I do find it to be better performing. I think it's a little bit more interesting for sure between the two. And it's one that I really like a ton. I think this is a great release. It's reasonable on discounters. It's usually below 80 bucks. Sometimes it's in the 70s for this bottle, which is a 100 mil, I had to double check, I think they come in 60 and 100. Great scent to have around. Really like this one a lot, and I'll tell you why. Dolce & Gabbana, the One Royal Knight. We've all had issues with the performance of the One EDP, right? You wish it had more, right? But unfortunately, it doesn't, and to be fair, it never has. The EDT, same way. They've never been great for performers, however, they have still risen to the top of the hype chain at one point, and so they were able to overcome that. And look, for great reason, I am a huge fan of the One EDP. I wear it at home in the evening all the time. Love that stuff. It's just not the choice that you would, you know, make if you were going out for an entire day. And that's just kind of what it is. You just have to, you know, kind of take it in stride. Okay, it doesn't perform that good, so I'm just going to wear it for date nights or evenings when I only need a few good hours out of it for performance. For most of you, that's okay. For some, that's not. And this is... Somewhat of a solution. The One Royal Knight is basically Dolce Gabbana the One minus the tobacco, focusing heavily on the amber and sandalwood. It's a lot more smooth. It obviously doesn't have the smoky tobacco, but I find that it has significantly better performance. And so here's what you do. You pick up a bottle of this and you layer this with the One EDP. Spray them both on at the same time. You can overlap them where you spray. You can spray in different spots. It's going to achieve the same thing. It's going to give you the longevity of this. You're going to get that tobacco sparkle and magic from the EDP problem solved. This is becoming harder to find now. Same with a lot of the exclusive editions, actually. Luminous Night has been hard to find since it first came out. Uh, but Mysterious Night is also getting a little bit tricky. So if you're wanting to get these, I would be looking into it now for sure. But it's a great solution to that performance issue. Let's go with just a simple OG Eau de Toilette kind of where it all started for the line prod alone i love the intense could easily be in here as well wanted to kind of kick some love over to the original because it is a great iris scent and yes we're back at it with the iris however this one is a fresh iris it's great for spring and early summer now realistically you can wear this one into fall and winter if you wanted to there are better options for this time of year but you can kind of do what you want with it you can sometimes get testers with a cap for $85, $86. General going rate for this is 100 mil full presentation, new in box for like 100 bucks. So it's a great scent that in the grand scheme of things compared to a lot of others is, is you know, about on par with everything else. Maybe not affordable, it's not 30 bucks, but it's, it's you know, not unreasonable given what you get, which is a great quality, super wearable work and school scent. People love this stuff, it smells amazing, it's easy to wear. You gotta have Prada Loam. And I guess these last two, three, including Prada Loam, we'll be finishing it off with warmer weather scents here. So if you're somewhere where it's getting warm instead of getting cold, lucky you, um, these last few here are gonna be applicable to you. So Aqua de Joe Parfum, I wanted to toss this in because it is officially taking replacement of Aqua de Joe Profumo. You know, that one has been a favorite of mine for years. I've got 
close to 10 bottles of it, been stocking up on it and buying backups for a long time. You know, I didn't go out and buy all those at once and spend a bunch of money. Uh, I've been collecting backups over the years, sometimes used bottles or whatever. I've been shopping smart, pick them up on eBay sometimes, just whenever I feel like, hey, that's a good deal on Profumo, I buy another one. And so I've got a ton of it. And I, you know, maybe wasn't necessary now that the Parfum is out, but it is what it is. Just telling you that to show you that I truly love the DNA. It's not just me making stuff up randomly. I've shown the bottles before. This is one of my all-time favorites. And yes, this is still very similar to Profumo. Instead of like an incense patchouli, they're using a patchouli and olibanum to provide some of that smokiness. Still very similar. The opening is better. It's improved in the Parfum. It's less grassy green. Still does have some of that, but not to the same level. They did a great job of just making a slight little improvement over this, but still maintaining that Profumo DNA. And, you know, I love it. I think this stuff is amazing, and my collection would not be complete without this DNA. And we'll finish it off with Blue de Chanel Parfum. What a beauty, you know. Great scent. It's my favorite out of all the Blue de Chanel's. I've said it before, I kind of go in reverse order. The Parfum is my favorite. The EDP is next up, and the EDT is at the end. I've got all of them. They're all great. I just tend to gravitate towards the Parfum and the EDP more in that order. I like the Parfum because of the lemon zest. Really uh, nice, kind of zesty, of course, but uh, sweet, sweet, zesty, textured, spicy opening. You know, it doesn't have the type of grapefruit sparkle, but just a little bit of a different twist off the top, but still maintains that Blue de Chanel DNA and smell. Also, none of these are known for great performance, but the Parfum does perform the best, although it's still not really beast mode. You know, that's another kind of point of contention with these is you're paying a lot of money and not getting a ton of performance. It is what it is for me, not a huge issue because I love how this DNA smells. But if you're someone who is into performance first and foremost, I would suggest another blue scent, Dylan Blue, Sauvage, something like that. You know, they're, they're different altogether those compared to this. This is by far the most classy blue scent on the market, or at least up there at the very, you know, one of the most. Um, but, you know, performance leaves a bit to be desired. Nonetheless, the quality and everything else is second to none. Alrighty, guys, that's going to do it for me. Some of my favorite masterpiece scents that, for me, my collection would not be complete without these. I'll link them down below. Also, jump on my mailing list and texting list. Uh, now through the end of the year, there's going to be some amazing rare fragrance restocks, great deals, great sales. You know, it's the time where there's just, you know, holiday sales, pre-holiday sales, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Christmas sales, everything like that. They're moving a lot of inventory, and there's a lot of rare fragrance restocks that happen throughout this time. So if you're on the mailing list and texting list, you will be the first to know, and you won't miss out. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.